Welcome to another milling training video from DAPRA, your provider of high-quality, 100% American-made milling tools. There are many different cutting-edge types available in today's cutting tool market, especially for indexable tooling, and it can be confusing when making the decision of which one to use for your application. This video will focus on the various cutting geometries, or edge preps, available for use on modern milling tools, and will provide some helpful advice on when and where to use each one. Recall from video number four on choosing your carbide grade that when you refer to your cutting tool catalog for help in setting up your milling application, you're generally given these pieces of information, your carbide grade descriptions, cutting edge geometry descriptions, recommended cutting speeds in surface feet per minute, and recommended cutting feed rates in feed per tooth. And we talked about how each of these is important and necessary to create a good milling program. For this session, we're going to focus our talk on the factors to consider in choosing the correct cutting edge geometry or edge prep for your milling tool. Given the variety in cutting edges available in indexable tooling and the lack of same for solid round tools, this session will be primarily for application on indexable milling tools. However, much of the same information is applicable for turning operations using indexable tooling as well. We're going to get into specifics regarding what to choose for your edge prep and when, but here are some general guidelines to keep in mind to get yourself off to a good start, especially for a new application where your results aren't a sure thing. First of all, start tough with your carbide to reduce chances of tool breakage. Start in the middle or lower half of the recommended speed range to avoid rapid overheating of the cutting edge. Start in the lower end of recommended feed range to avoid chipping and start with less depth of cut than you're ideally hoping for to gauge how the cutting tool, machine tool, and fixturing are handling the cutting forces. Add to these recommendations that you should start with the recommended cutting edge geometry or edge prep that your supplier's catalog recommends for the material being machined. As stated in our previous video, your typical catalog data chart should show you the recommended speeds and feeds for your cutting tool based on both the material being machined and on the carbide grade being used in the cutting tool. The final important piece of information that your supplier should provide is what type of cutting edge or edge prep should you use for the application. While this usually is the right place to start, various materials, machine tools, and applications require different types of cutting edges to allow successful machining. What if your cutting tool is long reach? What if the job's fixturing is unstable? What do you use to achieve the best metal removal rate? These questions and more can be addressed by using the guidelines we'll discuss in this video. One of the really good things about indexable tooling is the vast array of various cutting geometries available for use. From square shoulder to high feed, to button tools, to octagonal face mills, ball nose and backdraft finishing tools, and many, many more. Indexable cutting tools create opportunities to achieve high performance metal removal at very low pricing, especially in comparison to solid carbide tools. With all of this variety in geometry, having to choose the correct cutting edge can seem confusing. Let's take a look at the most common options available and their characteristics. There are four primary types of cutting edge geometries or edge preps that we'll cover for the purposes of this video. Before we talk about the characteristics of each edge prep, let's look briefly at the different components of the cutting edge itself so that the diagrams and our talking points make more sense. The first area is the primary cutting edge, the first point of contact between the cutting tool and the material being machined. Now, this area may have a land added for strength as shown here, or it may not. The second area shows the side of the insert, what is sometimes referred to as the flank. This is where the normal flank wear that dictates the remaining tool life should generally be seen. The next area is the rake face, 
where the chip created while machining will typically flow across the insert face. This area may have a chip breaker or it may be flat. Finally is the hone, which is basically a rounding of the cutting edge to provide a bit more strength. So now that we know a little more about what we're looking at, let's discuss the different cutting edge types. First is the T-Land, or K-Land as it is sometimes referred to. This is the strongest edge prep and is characterized by its negative approach to the material at the primary cutting edge or land area. This pushes the cutting forces into the strongest part of the carbide, which is capable of absorbing incredible stress. The chip then flows across what is usually a positive rake face to roll up and away from the insert face. This edge prep is usually reserved for tough steels, especially hardened steels, but also for cast irons. The second edge prep is similar, except that the land is neutral rather than negative. This strengthens the cutting edge, but to a somewhat lesser extent than the negative T land. The neutral edge is usually a net positive edge when loaded in a cutter body. So while it has some good strength characteristics, it also can be suitable for a wider variety of materials. The next edge shown is a honed edge and generally has little or even no land, which provides a more positive or high shear cutting action. This edge is the cleanest cutting of the three, generating the least tool pressure, temperature, and burr, but it is also the weakest in regards to shock and chipping resistance. This is generally the edge of choice for stainless steels, exotic materials, and high temperature alloys. Finally, we finish with an upsharp cutting edge, which is suitable ideally for non-ferrous materials like plastics and aluminum, where the sharp edge is desirable and is not necessarily susceptible to chipping. Recall from our last video that there are six primary material groups for machining. Standard non-heat treated steel, hardened steel, and usually we're talking about 45 Rockwell and above in that category, stainless steels, cast iron, exotics, and non-ferrous materials. Let's take a look at which cutting geometries or edge preps most often work best for each of these material types. The stronger edge of a T-Land or K-Land will provide optimum strength for cutting tougher and harder materials both. It will also provide the strongest and longest lasting edge when machining highly abrasive material like cast iron. When cutting normal tool steels, the T-Land will allow the highest chip loads or feed per tooth, yielding good metal removal rates. When hard milling steels over 45 Rockwell, Using the negative T-Land edge allows the carbide to cut even up to 62 Rockwell materials. In these cases, it is recommended that the feed per tooth not exceed the width of the T-Land, usually around four to six thousandths, to keep the cut on the negative land and off of the positive rake face, which is weaker in comparison. As stated previously, a honed edge by comparison is sharper and will generate less pressure, heat, and burr on the workpiece. This shear is necessary on materials like stainless steel, where the use of a more negative edge would yield a significant burr and cause work hardening, dramatically shortening the life of your cutting tool. For softer steels, especially low carbon steels, a honed edge can often provide a desirable finish and accompanying lower spindle load due to less tool pressure. A negative edge is generally not necessary on these softer steels, and on lighter duty machines, the more positive edge should create a better sounding cut. For very challenging materials like titanium, inconel, and high temperature alloys, the use of a honed edge provides the shear that's necessary to help prevent built up edge and heat, both of which are significant difficulties in these materials. On non-ferrous materials like aluminum, plastics, composites, and wood, an up-sharp cutting edge usually provides the best results. However, given the abrasiveness of many composites, some form of wear protection, such as coating or diamond tipping, may be necessary.
Here is a quick summary page for your reference. Again, use the stronger edges for the stronger materials and use the sharper edges for the softer materials or where the high shear cutting action is necessary for reducing heat or tool pressure. Note that the neutral edge is the most versatile, suitable for a variety of materials and applications and producing a middle of the road amount of pressure and burr. It's a very good first choice for job shops to use as an all around cutting tool. At this point, we suggest pausing your video playback and printing this page for future reference, or email us at info at with a request for this page, and we'll be happy to email it to you. Looking at the cutting edge comparison a bit differently, in terms of characteristics rather than material groups, You'll see that the stronger cutting edge has the advantage where the most aggressive parameters are desired when machining steel. This is especially true on 50 taper spindles where horsepower and rigidity are in abundance. The stronger edge also has the advantage when using shorter tool lengths or when machining especially hard or abrasive materials. When using this stronger edge though, expect more noise and higher spindle loads and greater tool pressure and heat. Now conversely, using a sharper edge will create a quieter, smoother cut, generating less heat and burr, while possibly still providing good metal removal rates on the lighter duty machines. The sharper edge can also have an advantage in long reach milling tools where tool pressure creates deflection. Remember though, to stay more conservative on your chip loads or feed per tooth to avoid overstressing the cutting edge, which could lead to chipping. The sharper edge will also break down more quickly on abrasive materials, so tool life in cast iron won't generally match that of a T-land. Since today's discussion has centered on indexable carbide cutting tools, it is important to note that in general, indexable cutting tools will not sound like or generate the same finish as solid round tools. Most round tools have little to no edge prep making them sharper and often are applied differently than an indexable tool would be. Be careful not to expect the same results from different products. Each has its place and has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. In general, indexable tooling is the way to go for roughing applications where exceptional metal removal rates can be achieved while also getting the value of multiple usable edges on each insert. Solid round tools tend to produce a better looking and more accurate finish on the workpiece for finishing cuts. An exception to this would be a finishing specific indexable tool like a ball nose or backdraft style insert, which has a sharp edge similar to solid round tools. Hopefully you found this helpful and have gained some understanding of why your cutting tool catalog recommends a certain cutting edge for your application. If in fact your catalog doesn't provide this type of recommendation, hopefully the insights you've gained here will help you make a good choice on your own. But as always, DAPA recommends contacting your application support when you're in doubt. Why struggle when part of the package you should be able to expect from your cutting tool supplier is product expertise and support. Now in our next video, we'll focus on selecting speeds and feeds for your application. See you next time.